back to the road. Today we're headed to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Gatlinburg today is pretty much a tourist trap, but it didn't start that way. Long before it bore the name Gatlinburg, it was little more than a point on a trail used by Native Americans traveling through the area. Though it was eventually used by European settlers, it still remained just a trail until a man named William Ogle attempted with the help of the local natives to clear some land for a home. Unfortunately, he died in a malaria outbreak when he returned to get his family. Eventually, his family did make their way into the area and finished his cabin. His descendants still live in the area to this day. You are probably wondering why it's not called Ogwell or Williamsburg. I have the answer for you. One of the settlers who came after William's family opened a post office in his general store. His name was Radford Gatlin. He was eventually run out of town over his confederate sympathizing, but the name apparently stuck. Now that we have some history out of the way, let's get started with Gatlinburg's modern touristy attractions by visiting the village shops. This is an interesting mall designed to have the appearance of a village somewhere in Europe. This small village is very Dutch. I have to admit that at the time I visited the village shops, I wasn't quite sure what it was supposed to be, but was quite surprised to see a shop selling souvenirs from Ireland. I was even more surprised to discover the very refrigerated magnets I had purchased while in Ireland just a couple weeks before filming this video. I guess if you want to trade the foothills of the Great Smokies for an Irish village for an hour and so this is the place for it. In either case, it's not a bad place to take some photos or pick up some souvenirs. Continuing our track through this resort town, we're headed for the Hollywood Star Cars Museum. This is the 60s era Batmobile. It certainly looks like a product of its time. But where are Batman and Robin? It seems they have abandoned the Batmobile in favor of General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard. We also found a sprinkling of cars from the Fast and the Furious series, with the ultimate being Paul Walker's Eclipse from the first movie. This Harley Davidson fat boy was used in Terminator 2. Yabba Dabba Doo. Upstairs, we find a Burt Reynolds Trans Am from Smokey and the Bandies, as well as several famous television cars like this Jalopy from Beverly Hillbillies. Along the way, we encountered this shrine to the creator of many of those cars, George Barrows. It's hard to believe that James Bond drove around in this humble Z3 roaster. It's a nice looking car, but 007 belongs in a DB5. For some reason, this place cruiser makes me want to visit an older tune. Speaking of tunes, here's Elvis Cadillac and a T-Bird driven by a Beach Boy. This is my favorite Beach Boy tune, Thunderbird. Keeping to the music theme, here's Michael Jackson's Mercedes. Now for the real stars, starting with this time machine made out of a DeLorean. And of course, arguably the most famous 59 Cadillac on earth, the Ecto-1. This thing is much bigger than I expected. I don't think the average person who has not driven a semi-truck could get in and start going around the corners. There is a lot of hood on this car. Continuing with the ultra touristy theme of this town, we are heading to the Museum of Salt and Pepper Shakers. I wonder if old William Ogu could have foreseen that one day his lost homestead would become host to such a vast collection of salt and pepper shakers from all corners of the globe. 
All joking aside, it's an amazing collection with a wide variety of categories to explore. There are shakers made of all kinds of materials. They come in all shapes and sizes. They're themed for everything from holidays to ethnic cuisines. There are animals, buildings, actors, and much more. Let's take a bit of time to look through all the shakers on display. You will probably find some themed after one of your own interests. Coca-Cola, sushi, those two things go well together. Rubber duckies in a tub. I imagine this being used for those ultra luxury occasions when you are served meals in the tub. You must align all the sides of this Rubik's cube to get sorted out this shaker. Toward the end of the tour, you will find several displays explaining where the salt that goes in the shakers comes from. Finally, you can buy salt and pepper shakers here at the museum. Salt and pepper shakers make me think of eating. And it's time for dinner. We decided to enjoy our evening meal at the highly rated pizzeria of Gatlinburg. We came in a bit early to avoid the rush and decided on Greek salad with a pepperoni pizza. The Greek salad appears to be second generation American Greek salad. But tasty just the same. Now for the pizza. Careful, it's quite hot. This pizza has lots of cheese, but tasty. Our next stop involves alcohol, so you may want to arrange transportation other than driving. Welcome to Sugarland's Distilling Company. Once inside, you will find a head spanning variety of spirits in all imaginable flavors. You will be directed to one of those counters to begin your tasting experience. Look down for a guide to the favors you can expect. Hand the bartender your ticket and let the ride begin. Our last stop on today's journey is the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This is the most visited national park in the United States, with around 14 million visitors annually. It is also the largest national park in the eastern United States at over 522,000 anchors. The park is full of hiking trails like this one we found just inside the park entrance. The visitor's center is a great place to get some information about the area encompassed by the park borders. This 3D map gives an idea of the massive scale of this park. Be sure to visit this small exhibit displaying some of the wildlife that can be found in the Great Smoky Mountains. There is also a gift shop with all sorts of memorabilia to take home. Moving on from the visitor center, there are numerous pullouts to enjoy nature or have a picnic along the way. This one seems to have been a favor for lovers. Just look at all the carvings on this toppled tree. I hope that's not a bad luck for their relationship. We heard that there are some great lookouts to view the town of Gatlinburg further up the road, and we were not disappointed with the first of several fantastic views.
based on those views, it is easy to see why residents of the area wanted to preserve the land in its natural state. Our last look out offers a fantastic view of the Smoky Mountains and the town of Gannenberg below. I hope you enjoyed this visit to Gannenberg, Tennessee, and hope you will join us for other adventures on the road. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.